a long awaited uh, webinar in fact so we all welcome you from railway academy first let me just request everybody to kindly put off your videos the videos will make you the transmission slow kindly put off your videos and please mute yourself so that it will not disturb the others in mr krithivasan sir on the phone please has he joined mr krithivasan okay let me start and he'll be joining a bit uh, uh, after a few minutes let me join let me join now let me start kindly put up your videos and uh, no uh, the wishes like good evening and other other messages not necessary we will be tend to see the messages so kindly do not put any messages good evening or all those messages not necessary kindly concentrate on the webinar that is enough for us it is being recorded and we'll be sharing the recording a little later are you able to see my screen please anyone can unmute and tell yes sir screen is visible please thank you yeah yes please so uh, you can uh, kindly do not put good evening and other things please not necessary kindly do, don't go with this and put off your videos please kindly put off your videos all the way twinkle sharma ji you can kindly put off your videos even i have not put on my video please put off your video twinkle sharma kindly put off your video yeah and uh, jitendra kumar twinkle sharma please put off your video video is not necessary please thank you so let us start uh, with the today session and please do not play on the screen please so i am able to see some lines drawn on the screen kindly do not play with this so listen to the webinar that will be more better so guys happy new year to all of you this is the first webinar in 2021 we are conducting and also happy makar sankranti for the party hall for all the participants so we'll be dealing with this irsc module how to prepare for irsc licenses and prepare for module exams there are two different concepts here one is irsc licensing and other one is the certificates obtained by appearing for the modules you will come to know in this webinar what are the different uh, licenses categories how the different categories are defined for which categories you are eligible what are the advantages of uh, obtaining the license kindly mute yourself please all of you kindly mute yourself otherwise your side noise most of you have joined from home so naturally there will be talks uh, in the families so please mute yourself and you can concentrate on the learning on this webinar you can concentrate so these modules how what are the different modules how you need to appear for the certificate course how you will be able to get advantage of appearing for the modules after passing the modules what are the steps for irsc licenses how to obtain the license what are the different categories so this webinar is organized by railway academy which is free of cost people who are all interested to join this webinar can join it and they can get benefited so we from the railway academy conduct various courses the railway academy was established way back in 2015 we started conducting the pg diploma course post graduate diploma in railway signaling and telecommunication with uh, rayat bahara university mohali and uh, at ramaya university in bangalore with these two universities we are conducting the uh, pg diploma course which is for one year apart from this we have also delivered our trainings for uh, different organizations 
and on different topics like tasks of CBTC. And now today we are launching on IRSC. Our customers are Thales, Tech Mahindra, Anseldo STS, Alstom, Siemens, Railtel, Texmeco, and other various companies where we we'll go with the, uh, the various trainings. Audio not coming, sir. Is it so for everybody? Are you not getting my audio, please? Uh, no, I am able to get. I am uh, Kriti Vasan. Yeah. yeah yes, okay. it, it has just come. Yeah. Uh, fine, sir. I will be making you co-host. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, so that uh, once your uh, turn comes, you can start uh, talking on that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, and you can tell me the next slide. I, I'll be I'll be moving the next slide. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Right. Thank you. So kindly let us continue here. So these are our customers wherein we conduct the different courses for different companies. The Railway Academy is uh, headed by Mr. Ajay Singh, who is the director for collaboration. The messages are making me to uh, look at <laughs> the messages. It is better not to kindly put the message, please. I'll be just seeing there if any urgent messages are there from me. So kindly mute yourself as far as possible. And Mr. Sumit Kanu is the director of marketing. And I, think, I am, uh, I, am no, I, think so. uh, I think somebody is saying not able to listen or hear or something. Yeah. No, probably it is a problem at his end. Oh, I cannot uh, hear. Or, or other, you are able to hear, sir? Yeah, yeah, I am able to hear. Yeah, yeah. when other guys also hear, probably he need to check his audio. Okay, fine. So I am... I am Narayan Parvatikar. I am director academics and also I am a trainer on the railway signaling. Apart from that, we have different faculty members with us. Dr. P. Rajagondan, a retired general manager from the railways. Mr. Sambi Reddy, retired chief engineer from the <laughs> railways. <laughs> Kindly mute yourself, please. Kindly mute yourself. Kindly mute yourself. Your, uh, Sounds are disturbing the others. Kindly mute yourself. It will be disturbing the others, please. Kindly mute yourself. Pavan Kumar, kindly mute yourself. Radhika Chimane, kindly mute yourself. Your other talks are hampering the... Kindly mute yourself. All of you kindly mute yourself. If you are able to listen to me, kindly mute yourself. Except Mr. Krithivasan, who is uh, the coordinator here, except him, everybody can kindly mute yourself. Mr. Pawan Kumar, kindly mute yourself. Kate Jangaya, kindly mute yourself. I am withdrawing uh, the co-host and I'm making Krithivasan the... Sir, you can just talk, Krithivasan, sir? Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, can you go to the next slide? I think, yes, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I have not... I have not uh, yeah, I have not... Uh, Take it. My name has not yet come. Yeah. <laughs> now no, you are the co-host. Yeah. Fine. So, Mr. Sambi yeah, no. is our uh, faculty member, Surindranath, who is the RAMS expert. Mr. M.M. Prakasham, who is the OHE expert. The railway signaling traction is an expert. Apart from this, we are having other faculty members like uh, Ajit Pandey, who is a RAM engineer. He is working from Dubai. Mr. Vijay Velanki is a design engineer, retired from the Indian Railways, who is a designing expert, railway signaling design expert. Mr. Munnaral Sharma, who retired as a divisional engineer from Central Railway, and he is a, a telecommunication expert. Mr. M. V. Krithivasan, today's faculty member, who is introducing the IRSE for you. Mr. Subara, who retired as assistant engineer from railways and also from Irisat, is a signaling expert. Mr. Ram Kumar, who is a senior section engineer from Southern Railway, who is an expert in the electronic interlocking and the relay interlocking. So apart from that, we have the, we do conduct different training programs. 
We conducted 30 hours of certificate course in the railway ramps. Already the course has started from yesterday. It is conducted by Dr. Gondon and his team. We conduct functional safety for 20 hours, which is useful for CBTSCs and DRTMS. 60 hours certification course in railway signaling, which is open to everybody and more useful for the people who are already in service. 15 hours certification course in data management, which is again more relevant to CBTC, the Metro technology and ERTMS. 60 hours of certification course on OHG, overhead equipment for railway traction engineers, railway electrical engineers, and electronic interlocking and equipment course, the overall picture of electronic interlocking, its structure, how it works, it is around eight to 10 hours course, a weekend course. We also do conduct the tailor-made courses for various companies based on the request. The upcoming webinars are on uh, next Sunday, we are having a webinar on project management conducted by one of the experts of the project manager who is working at Dubai. And he of course, he's from uh, India and he is conducting the project management followed by the two days training. We have on 31st of January on the designers course, which is for railway signal engineers, railway signal designers. Kindly attend those webinars wherein you can get more details. These are the upcoming courses in uh, February, March, that is project management course, designers course for railway signaling, certification course for railway signaling guys, and electronic interlocking in the month of April. Yeah, the IRSC, so. the Institute, and, uh, Institute of Railway Signal Engineers is the today's topic which will be otherwise told more in detail by Mr. Krithivasan. I will just give a brief about it. I really welcome all the participants, the, the very enthusiastic participation, participants here who are more interested here. Slide to the first one, click to tap speak. I'm not able to follow what you, what you want. Okay. So, then we have the prerequisite. We'll be covering here what are the prerequisites for attending this training. Who can attend this training? And uh, by having a prerequisite conditions, how more it will be benefited. What is the importance of IRC licensing and uh, modules? Mr. Krithivasan will be dealing more in detail on the importance of this license and modules. We also cover the details of fees, timings, duration, when the training will be conducted, everything will be told at the end of the training session. Most of the doubt you will be having here, who are eligible for this course, IRSC licensing, and who are eligible for appearing for the different IRSC modules. What is the duration of the training? Naturally, we'll be covering here, what is the duration of the training? And subsebara uh, rupaya, what is the fees for each and every training courses? Please wait, please wait till the end where you will get answers for all the questions. You may be having many doubts in the mind. And Mr. Krithivasan sir will be covering most of your doubts in his presentations. I request everybody to kindly listen to the presentation patiently. Then if any questions are not answered, definitely you can ask at the end of the session what are your queries? We have we will give you the time to ask for the queries. What are the opportunities for this IRSC modules? The first one is kindly understand this IRSC is more concerned with the UK signaling. The designers, installers, verifiers, for that matter, all the signaling experts. OHG experts, civil experts who are working for UK railway projects, they need to have this IRSC license. It is more relevant to them. In other countries, it is of no much importance. It only adds a value to your qualification. 
naturally the IRSC guys, IRSC license holders will get a higher pay in any organization. And if you are already working, you will be getting a sponsorship from your company to appear to obtain the IRSC license so that once you obtain the IRSC license, you have more value in the same company. You have higher pays. Actually, any course, training course you complete, you attend, you look for a better opportunities monetarily. So this IRST will add value to your education. So Mr. Krithivasan, I'll be introducing him. I'll uh, hand over him to now. Yeah. <coughs> conducting today's session. Kindly listen patiently to him. You will be getting cleared your all the doubts. After one hour at seven, at eight o'clock sharp, we will have a five minutes break. And again at eight five, we'll rejoin. You need not log off and log in. Just keep logged in and we'll continue after eight o'clock. Probably by nine, we'll be able to complete, including the question and answer sessions. Thank you very much. Over to Mr. Kathivasan, sir. Sir, so yeah. please introduce yourself and yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can start. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good evening, all. Uh, I am seeing 103 members uh, or 104 as I speak. Uh, so welcome to this IRSC webinar session. This is going to give you some introduction about what is IRSC. <clears throat> Sorry, am I on mute? No. So this is going to give you an introduction of what is IRSC and uh, how it will be beneficial to you in your career and what does IRSC actually offers you towards improving your competence and also as Parvatikar said, sir said earlier, improving your status in the company and your financial growth or salary or whatever you think of. So IRSE is basically a UK organization and it, uh, next slide, sir. Yeah, and uh, sorry, before that, actually, he wanted me to introduce myself. I am a retired DSTE from Central Railway. Unless you are aware of the railway background and railway setup, you may not be fully uh, aware of this. I am a retired divisional signal and telecommunication engineer. I retired in 2007, and then I've got some uh, about 13 years of UK exposure, and I just left my company in 2020. <clears throat> Now, during this, I was associated for about four and a half years directly in UK, working with the client that is Network Rail, and I have interfaced in a lot of meetings and all that. So this is my career background. Initially, I started as a signal engineer in Indian Railways and then had all my three level or four level promotion in the Group C cadre, and then went into Group B and had a two level promotion. And finally, I had to retire in 2007. I took voluntary retirement. So this is my background. I am a diploma in electrical and electronics from Masab Tank Government Polytechnic, Mehdi Patnam in 1978. I am basically a Tamilian, but I can speak Hindi, Marathi, Telugu, Kannada, Tamil, and I can understand Malayalam. So if anybody thinks that uh, an explanation in its language will be more useful. <laughs> I can do it also. <clears throat> right. So these are my basic uh, technical background. And I have been in railways for 25 years in Indian railways, and then 13 years exposure in UK rail. And during this 25 years, I was sent for two years in deportation to, uh, in Atkins, Sharjah, to work on UK rail signaling project. So <clears throat> overall, British exposure is around 15 years and 23 years in Indian Railways. I have worked in different fields in Indian Railways. I have worked in uh, fault maintenance. I have worked in uh, teaching and instruction and giving a technical training to staff. I have worked in workshop where there was some relay overhauling and all the overhauling aspects. And then I was posted as uh, works in uh, headquarters in uh, Mumbai, CSTM where I was involved in tenders, contracts, and project management and de de design. And then further, <coughs> finally, when I left, I was in a, con in a conversion project, 
Mumbai, as you know, was earlier a DC electrified section. Now it has been converted to AC, pro AC electrification. So I was in the DC AC project when I voluntarily retired in 2007. So this is my career background. And uh, this is my exposure to all sorts of uh, railway, including India, UK, projects, construction, maintenance, training, and works. Right. So I hope everybody is able to see on the slide what is the advantages of IRSC. So first, IRSC is an industry standard. That means if you say that I am IRSC competent or I have passed IRSC modules, so they assume that you have the requisite knowledge and you have the requisite competency to do a particular work. It can be any design work, it can be an installation work, or it can be a testing work, but IRSC has got competency for all the various aspects of a rail signaling project. It has got for installation, it has got for testing, it has got for commissioning, it has got for design. So various categories. And <clears throat> so all this, an IRSC license will actually tell others that you are competent. You've gone through the process and you are aware of the process and you are following the process. So there are but, three uh, things. Uh, uh, you are able to see the slide, no? Yes, I'm able to see it. Uh, yeah, I think there is no problem from our side. Uh, Mr. Ankit, kindly check up your uh, internet, please. Okay. Uh, please yeah. continue. Anybody else who is not able to see the slide? I... I'm not able to see your slide. No, sir. That's no, sir. It's visible. Okay, okay, fine. It, so it, is, it is visible that for a few people, they have they may be having a local problem, otherwise, they are okay. invisible. Continue, okay, yeah, okay, right, yeah, it is visible, right? Thank you. So, what I want to say is there are three aspects to this. When you say, once you say that I am IRSC qualified, it means that you are aware of the requirements of IRSC. Second one is you are following it in your regular work, whatever work you do design, installation, testing, commissioning, whatever project management, everything. And the third one is, it says that, okay, people can rely on you. People can re rely on you, give you an assignment and have the assurance that it will be completed or it will be done to the full satisfaction as per the IRSE requirements. So this is the three advantages of having an IRSE license. And professional development, as already Parvatikar said, yes, you will be rising in your company if they have got different levels for different uh, competency of people who are having IRSC licenses, uh, either design, installation, testing. So all this will help you to develop your career further. And self-reputation, fine. You have all come out with college, from the colleges with a diploma or degree, whatever it was taught. And maybe three years service, two years service, any company, anything you would have done. But uh, today, if your reputation is a bit low due to your qualification or due to the work that you are doing, your IRSC certification and your IRSC license will help you to improve. And it will enable you to say that, yes, I'm able to have, I'm, I have this IRSC license and I'll be able to demonstrate commitment to maintain the professional standards. And I have already the knowledge and the understanding that is being evaluated by RSC and a license given to me. And thirdly, it all means the same once again, career progression and self-development. So an IRSC candidate is always preferred, far better than a non-IRSC. Not because that he is technically qualified. Or he may, you may be an M-Tech, he may be a B-Tech and all that. Of course, all that is not my concern here. But what I want to say is your basic qualification will not matter, but the way that your IRSC license and your competency is reflected will help you to secure a better position. So this is what is my <clears throat> view about IRSC and why you should possess the IRSC as long mm -hmm. as, yeah. As long as you're in the rail, railway signaling field, the IRSC competency. Will, yeah, somebody is. As long as you're in the railway signaling field or railway field, an IRSC competency will always give you an edge over the others to say that, yes, I'm aware, I can do it better, I can manage it better, and I have got my own way of looking at things. So this is the advantage of IRS. Now, IRSC has got different levels of membership. 
I don't know, in your younger days, you would have found a doctor with an advertisement saying MBBS, Bombay and MCS, MDR, all that. Along with that, he will have 16 abbreviations, FRCS, FRMS, whatever it was. So FRCS and all that means actually he is a member of the fellow of Royal College of Surgeons. It is not an additional qualification, but he is a member. So what is the advantage of being a member? My view is, if you are a member of IRSC, then you will have the information, the latest technical information, the latest technical development that is taking place in the railway signaling field. So that will help you to keep abreast of the industry of the developments which are there. And maybe three years later, your own company may introduce such a system and they say, okay, does anybody know about this? Then you say, yes, I've already seen it in IRSC magazines and IRSC websites and all that. So membership of this institution will give you a regular update of all the technical developments and also will give you a previous history of how the systems have developed from the 1800s or 1850s right up to now, 1900s, 2000, 2020, CBTC, track circuit, track circuit, whatever you, what not, all this, how the systems have developed. And occasionally it will also discuss certain causes of accidents. Now this is very, very important because if you are working in service and if you are installing something, what is the disadvantage or what will be the advantage? What precautions you need to take? All that will be there in the manufacturer guidelines, but this IRSC magazines also will support you with some latest information. So membership of the IRSC is an asset and you can also write below your name and designation along with your qualification to say that FIRSC or AMRSC. I think already a few members are there. So like that. So what are the conditions? So fellow is, a fellow of IRSC means he's already a member or possesses the requirements of member and holds a superior responsibility for five years. So what I'm now showing on the slides is nothing new. It is all available in the IRSC website. But only thing is, because we are not aware, either we are not seeing it, or sometimes we don't see it because it is not important to us. But when you think of, okay, let me see what is IRSC, why people are always saying IRSC, IRSC is required, why? Then you will go back to that. So it is all there in the website. I have not written anything new, but the only thing is to show the importance. And somebody should, uh, once somebody explains, then you will feel, yes, it is really important. So. If, so fellow means already a member or possesses the requirements of member and holds a superior responsibility for five years. I don't know, somebody is unmuted. Then member, preferably an engineering degree, practically trained and currently holds a senior responsibility or high level technical qualification and passed IRSE professional examination or recognized equivalent or senior responsibility. So even if you are not passing the modules, but still you hold a senior responsibility of let us say, of uh, managing a particular project or managing a particular installation for five years, six years, 10 years, then all that will add to. So you can apply to become a member of the IRSC. Of course, they have the, what you say, they have the privilege, they have the right to scrutinize your application and either qualify you or say that not qualified, you can become a lower associate member or something like that. So they have got the full privilege. We, we can only apply with all our justification to say that, yes, I am doing this and I want to become a member. So they may say, okay, your membership is accepted or rejected and you can go to a lower category. Right, sir, next slide, sir. Yeah, this is associate member. This is what I said. Typically holds a primary technical qualification, right? Let me say people like me holding a diploma qualification. Yes. Or IRSC professional examination. So even if you're not a diploma, then you can apply for all the IRSC professional examination and then pass all those examination. Then you can become an associate member or hold IRSC license or equivalent competency as recognized by the council. So if you, so these are the conditions for associate member. And next one is, accredited technician. So there, this is a, what I say is a bit lower, but initially holds a competency qualification recognized by the council and trained and actively engaged in the profession. 
So not passed any modules, not holding any license, but still you are working in the rail signaling field and you are currently having one year, two years experience, whatever, and you are responsible for certain activity. Let us say installation, testing, design, then you can become an accredited technician. So like this, they have got various levels. It is not that you always uh, have to come back to the top level and become a fellow only. So fellow, member, associate member, and accredited technician. So next slide. <clears throat> yeah, and then there is an affiliate employed in the profession and undertaking initial training or undertaking a course of full-time education. Now, something like uh, you are doing. You are under undergoing a course of full-time education relevant to the profession. So you want to enter into rail signaling, but right now you are only getting educated, undergoing training classes and training courses or connected with or engaged in the profession. Okay, so you're already engaged in the profession of rail signaling, either installation, design, whatever you do, or actively interested in the promotion, development and practice of the profession. So, okay, you're not doing anything at all, but you're still actively interested in pushing people in developing certain items or equipment, whatever it is. So at that, then you can become an affiliate member. Then next one is companion, eminent and associated with the profession. So this is something which will be normally council recommendation. So you can either become an affiliate or you can become an associate member. So there are various categories. But unless you become a member or a low, unless you join IRSC to become an associate member, you will not be allowed to appear for the examinations. That will come in the next few slides. So, so far so good. No response. Okay, fine. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes, right. Sir. Yeah, yes, right. Sir. Okay, 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 right. Thank you. Uh, so that I want to see that whether my flow is okay, whether you want me to go a bit slow or whether you want me to be a bit fast, and uh, uh, Parvatikar has already said two hours. Uh, we are already into the 20 minutes, I think. Right. <clears throat> so these are different membership details. So fellow, fellow means master's. So these are actually technical qualifications. Fellow means you should have a master's degree, an M tech or a B tech or qualifications of comparable level. Member, it should be a master's degree or a bachelor's degree or qualification of a comparison. Associate member, post school qualification and accredited technician means IRSC license. So if you're not having any technical qualification, so please be, well, what do you say? Please take note of the fact that they are not asking for engineering graduates and post graduates. They say that if you are doing, if you are working in rail signaling field and you have an IRSC license, then you can join it as a accredited technician also. And once you are, let us say, four or five years into accreditation, accredited technician, then you will be promoted to associate member. And maybe 10, 15 years into associate member, then you will become a member also. So like that, they give the promotion, but you should apply through your own, <coughs> based on your own exposure and experience. And one of the most important fact is you should be continuing to do the work. So today you became an accredited technician and five years later, if you are away from the rail signaling field, then they will, you cannot get yourself promoted to associate member. You should be continuing to do what you are doing and you should be associated with the same system and uh, same, what, what if you think railway, yes, railway, signaling, communication, whatever it is. But uh, I've left railways, I've joined some other private company, I went to the bank and now I want to become an associate member. No, not possible. Because every time when you ask, they will have, they will ask for your five years or 10 years of verification from your supervisor. That supervisor will have to sign and say that, yes, he has been doing the same activity for three years or four years or five years. And now he can be eligible for associate member. If you're changing the field, then you cannot. So I hope everything is going on well now. IRSC is an organization which issues various licenses for the signaling activities. Now, this is what I was telling earlier. So they do issue licenses for signaling activity. Now, signaling activity for people who are associated with signaling will know that initially there'll be a design. Then this design will be sent out to site. There'll be an installation. <clears throat> there'll, there'll be an installation. I'll come back uh, Sudhir Rai Durga, I think. Uh, I've seen your question, I'll come back. 
So IRAC uh, signaling activity. So one is installation. The other one may be testing. The third one may be commissioning. The fourth one will be managing the project. So like that signaling activities, there are many, many activities. It is not that everybody should be in design only sitting in the office and doing CAD work. You can be at site, you can be installing safety equipments, you can be testing the safety equipments, you can be validating it, or you can be verify, verifying it. So validation, verification. So all this also is a part of signaling activity. Then finally you will say, I am certifying that this system is safe for train. And that final certificate will be a cliffhanger for you. That is, it will. <clears throat> everybody will be waiting for the final certificate to say that, okay, system is commissioned and trains can run. So what responsibility and how safe you should be and what precautions you should take is all your responsibility. So various licenses for signaling activity and enables the rail signaling industry to maintain the integrity of the signaling works and systems and employ competent persons for the project or activity. Now, this is a very, very important phrase. So first it says, okay, it, it gives various licenses. Then it enables the rail signaling industry. Now, let us say if I'm running Indian Railways and I will say that I want only competent people. I don't want people from work, work, working on the roads or working in banks and sitting in tank bend and whatever it is. So I don't want people like that. I want people who will <coughs> maintain the integrity of the signaling work. They are competent to do the work. Only they, I want them. I don't want any others. So IRSE is an organization which will issue licenses. So tomorrow, if uh, the, any company comes and says that I want 10 people with these particular level of IRSE licenses, then they want only those competent people. They do not want to reduce their level of competency. And they will say persons do need not apply. Whoever is not having a license need not apply. Because they want to maintain their system integrity and the system competency. They want to employ. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, uh, Salman, I think you will need to come to be with an email later. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to answer. But uh, if such individual questions come, first of all, what happens is I lose uh, track of what I'm trying to say. Second uh, one is... Sir, one, one, I request everybody to kindly keep your questions at the end of the session. Let the flow go seamlessly so that we can answer your questions at the end. Most of the questions, whatever you are having, you will get the answers in the presentation. Kindly listen to the presentation patiently, then we'll answer, definitely we'll answer, questions will answer. Yeah, okay, so right. And so what we were there is uh, uh, integrity of rail signaling works and systems and employ competent persons for the project or activity. So the, co the company will ensure that there are the persons whom they appoint to do a particular work, installation, testing, design, commissioning, project, they are all competent. So just like uh, when you want to build a house, you always go to a reputed builder. You don't go to X, Y, Z because he's already, you know that he is already competent and he's already had a lot of exposure in the market and he knows the policies and principles. In the same way, they will go for people who are having the particular competency. Now, how does the IRSC do it? This is done by assessment. So they assess your work, what you are doing. What is the work that you are doing now? And whether it will be fitting the license requirements. If, if not, what additional work you should do? So that will be, we'll be covering in the later slides. If you are doing design, then what you should do, what additional efforts, if you are doing whatever it is. So it will come in the further slides. So this is done by assessment and issue of competency licenses based on individual ability to perform and understanding the rules, regulations, and relevant standards. Now, these three words, as long as you're in the railway signaling service, you will have to remember rules, regulations, and relevant standards. So these are something like your, uh, just like when you drive your vehicle on the road, you, you have to follow the rules. There are certain regulations, left side, right side, U turn, V turn, whatever it is. Relevant standards, so speeds, all that. So in the same way, you will need to understand what are the rules. If I need to do some work, a signaling work, what is the rule? Can I do it? Can I fit this equipment anywhere I want? Can I fit a transformer right on the top basement or top floor or whatever it is? So yeah, Nathan, Sony, I'll come back to you. Yeah, okay. 
uh, it is a continuous process. That's what I said. It is a continuous process and ensure that you continue to do that particular activity. So once you get the IRSC license and then you leave the field and say, no, 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 I have done my, I got my IRSC license. I'll take some work in some other company. And then tomorrow, two years later, I will leave that company and go in for some other, then you were pr continuous process. You're not adopting it. Now, what happens when you're not adopting the continuous process is you will not come to know the what is the latest updates, latest change in the standards, in the regulations. Maybe as you drive on the road, there is a new flyover which has been late, implemented latest with some speed restrictions. So you're not aware. So I'm just comparing it to a driving because it's uh, as safe as a railway operation. And it is a continuous process and ensure that you continue to do that particular activity as a part of your profession and improve your competency and renew your license based on the work done and supportive evidences. So you need to show that you are doing the particular work and you need to show an evidence. I hope everybody is clear about evidence. Evidence is just like a court case where you have proof of having said something or having done something or having signed a document. So you need to have a supporting evidence. So today, if you are in design and if somebody is asking you, can you please draw a whatever a small circuit and all that. So what you need to do is you need to take an instruction from him, draw the particular circuit and keep it as a record to say that this is a circuit I have given and tomorrow the installer is going to make some mistake and create an accident or a fire or whatever it is. I am not responsible because the circuit that I have given is safe as per my standard and my knowledge. So that's why you need to have an evidence. If you're not having evidence, then it will be very difficult for them to progress or process your further licenses. So anything you do, you need to have an evidence. At least if your manager is not accepting, you give an acknowledgement to him to say that this is the design or this is the information or this is the document or this is the system information that I have collected. And this is my evidence to say that I have informed you. And it is a manager responsibility to either ignore it, take it ahead or seek remedial measures or to certify that yes, it is implementable at site. So please have evidences. If there is no evidence, then it will be very difficult for you to justify tomorrow if something goes wrong and also progress your license and your competence. Yeah, so this is the IRSC licensing scheme provides assurance about the competence of individuals to carry out technical, safety critical or safety related work on signaling and railway telecommunication equipment and system. So this is the assurance that it gives that, okay, this individual, when I certify him as a designer, he is having the following competency that he can carry out the technical safety critical or safety related work. Now, these are two important factors. Uh, sorry, these are two important phrases which you must remember right through your signaling field. One is safety critical and the other one is safety related. Once we will, uh, as the syllabus goes ahead, we will discuss what this is and how different it is and how much it, uh, how much safe you need to be with regard to your <coughs> design work or any other signaling work. It uh, provides uh, yeah, somebody's music, maybe irritated or <laughs> right it provides a cross industry accepted benchmark of competence for personal carrying out a range of activities from maintenance see now this is what i was saying so it provides a cross industry accepted benchmark right so today atkins may accept tomorrow uh, infotech may accept uh, the third one arcadis may accept so like that there are various the companies which actually look for competent irsc people so it is a cross industry standard. It is not that only for, you can work only for Alstom or you can work only for Infotech or you can work only for Atkins or any other company, Scient or whatever it is. It provides a cross. So if you have an IRSC license, today you can work at X place, tomorrow you can transfer yourself to Y place. So this is a cross industry benchmark of competence. So like that, if you have a driving license, you can work whatever uh, vehicle you drive, it can be a Maruti Swift or it can be a Volkswagen or whatever it is. So like that, it's a cross industry. So a license does not say that you are suitable only for Maruti or you're suitable only for a Volkswagen or something like that. 
Right. So benchmark for competence of personnel carrying out range of activities from maintenance. So maintenance through design, installation, testing, project engineering, and senior technical management. So these are various, various licenses which are given by IRSC. All license holders must abide by the obligation of license holder, li obligations of license holders. So there is a format that they need to follow, which is set out the professional standards expected. So professional standards. So just like <coughs> if you have a license, then you are supposed to maintain a, your standard method of working. So just uh, if I say something, can you install this equipment? You will say, no, I cannot install the equipment because I need something in writing from you. You should communicate to me what you want me to do. Do you want me to install it on one bolt? Do you want me to install it on four bolts? Or do you want to install it on six bolts? The second one is, do you want me to earth it? Do you don't want any earthing? All this you will need to tell me in writing, then only I will do it. Or if you are not able to tell me in writing, then give me a pamphlet or a standard design or a standard drawing to say that please install it as per drawing XXX. So I will install it as per the drawing. Because tomorrow you should not come back and say that you have not provided the fuse. The fuse is in the wrong place or there is no earthing, no earthing terminal. So all this I don't want to hear. So this is what is professional standards. So if you are instructed, follow the instruction, agree to the instruction, communicate to the person that you have understood the instruction and then start doing the work. So please, if you're, then only you will become competent. You can show it as an evidence to say that I do not take inst any blank instruction from anybody. I have got rules, I have got standards, I have got procedures. I got drawings and I got instructions to support my work. Unless that is done, you will not be termed as competent. If you do as I say, and tomorrow I am not available, the Y, X, Y, or Y person will come and say, please, can you do it this way? Or Z will come and say, why you have done this way? X has said, then you say X has said, then you say, well, where is X? What is X? Who is X? What he has said? Where is it? writing all that you will have to keep on conflict so don't do that take an instruction clarify get it accepted or if he is not giving writing you tell him give him a mail or give him in writing to say that i am doing as per your instruction installing it at four feet from the ground level with four bolts and nuts and all that whatever you want to say because tomorrow you should not say that i have not done correctly because this is signaling equipment and this is going to remain at the installation maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, I don't know. And there may be any fault, anything, the whole rack may fall down, the whole shelf may fall down, all that is not. So this scheme has been designed to meet the requirements of international standard for personal certification and is accredited to that standard within the UK. So as Parvatikar sir, uh, sir said earlier, this is basically for UK rail signaling, but now persons are deemed IRSE uh, licensed and competent persons are also deemed to be having preferential treatment in Australia. Even though Australia has got separate ARTC standards and all that, a person with IRSC license is deemed to be a bit more competent for any signaling projects work in Australia. So, so like that, tomorrow even Indian Railways may come back and say that I want only IRSC competent people to do the work. I do not want any XYZ who has come from college and who has come from uh, something somewhere else without the knowledge of installing or wiring a relay or wiring a circuit and all that. So this is to ensure competency. This is to ensure that system, whatever they do is reliable, safe, safety related, and no other issues will be occurring during the train running operations. Right. <clears throat> I think uh, we are going a bit slow. Can't help. Mm. Uh, I have to just read through, which I don't want to do. <laughs> Competency standards for a wide range of signaling and telecom activities have been prepared by a number of expert working groups. Right. So now this is something that you should be very careful about. It's not prepared by you and me. It is prepared by working groups, expert people who have already worked in those fields to say that if you work in this field, you should have these competencies. Just like a driving license requirement is not done by you or me. It is done by somebody who has already analyzed the traffic conditions and also implemented certain rules and said that, okay, if people are aware of all these 10 requirements, then they can be issued the license. 
So in the same way, it has been done by very co highly competent people, <coughs> expert working groups comprised of users of the scheme and these standards are available to all employers. So whoever wants to employ, suppose uh, Atkins or Infotech or Scient or at Alstom want to employ a person, an IRSC signaling, uh, let us say assistant designer with an IRSC license. So they will come to know what should be the competency of that person. So they will look only for those competent persons to take them into the uh, assignment. The competency assessment checklist, the list of the specific skills and the underpinning knowledge required needed to carry out any particular category or type of work. For example, the license categories for signal maintenance includes assistant maintainer, maintainer, fault finder, and maintenance manager. So if you go for signaling maintenance, even maintenance has got these four bits. One is assistant maintainer. The second one is maintainer. The third one is fault finder and maintenance manager. So if you start thinking about it, uh, initially, if you read uh, maintainer, you should be knowing all the four. No, he need not know all the four. He can be a technical. He'll be only an assistant to the maintainer, installing, nutting, bolting, and earthing, and all that. Or he, somebody who is maintaining can know the faults, what will be the probable faults in the system. There will be a separate person to identify a fault finder will be there who will who is aware of the maintenance and also he is aware of the how to find out the faults. And there will be a maintenance manager who will see that, okay, all the equipments which are needed are maintained, scheduled properly, regularly inspected, overhauled, replaced, whatever it is. Yeah, so Lal Tesh Kumar. Yeah, okay, I'll come back. Oh, otherwise, what I'll do is at the end of the show, I think uh, I'll share my email ID through Parvatikar and then uh, you can all revert back to me with some emails where I'll be able to explain to you further instead of, uh, right, sir. Uh, next slide, sir. Yeah. Uh, individuals are assessed against the competence standard using a two-stage assessment process. So this is what is a two-stage assessment. There, there will be two stages of assessment. So like that, uh, like in driving, you've got your learner's license and then the actual driving license. So like that, here there will be a two-stage assessment to ensure impartial collection and review of evidence. And a successful completion of the process, a license for those specific categories of work is issued by the IRSC. So this uh, two-stage assessment, one is called as a workplace assessment and the other one is a competence assessment. Uh, so that's we will go further. Uh, then a logbook is used to record the details of training, qualification, and work experience. You know, this is something that every IRSC member will have to have with them. A license holder, a logbook. What is a logbook? I don't know if people have heard of logbook. A book which actually records the events one by one. So here it is not events, it is actually, let us say projects. Today you're working in this project, four months later, you'll be shifting to another project that will be having some different requirements. So what you need to do is you need to maintain a record. License holders are required to maintain the logbook and the assessors will want to see it to provide evidence during the assessment process. So logbooks can be brought from the IRSC or can be provided by an employer. So if your company says, okay, everybody should have IRSC logbook, then they will pay for the logbook and they will provide you and they will re review every six months. So that is okay. If your company doesn't want you to have an IRSC and you want to individually go for an IRSC license, then you can go to the IRSC website and say that I want to purchase a logbook, give your address and all that and pay through the bank. Then they will supply you the full logbook, which will have forms which you need to update regularly and keep it as a evidence for IRSC licenses. Next slide, sir. Yeah, right. So as uh, just like there is a logbook, once there is a logbook, then they'll start recording all them, all of the activities. People doing work may make errors. Suppose as a designer, you have made some error and I want uh, it to be highlighted. Then what I'll do, there is a facility to record any significant complaints about the workmanship in the logbook. So the logbook has got a complaints form where I can write to say that this gentleman on so-and-so date or as on so-and-so project has designed a circuit which is incorrect. So what will happen to that? Just like you create an accident on the road, what will happen? Initially, there'll be an investigation. 
After that, your license may be withheld for six months or one year, whatever it is. And after that, you will be once again reviewed or tested, and then the, your license will be reissued. So in this case also, if there is a very, very severe accident or due to your design, then your license will be revoked. And one year later or two years later, provided it is correctly justified that you have learned the process, then it will be reissued. And if you think that it is a wrong complaint, then you can ask for investigation also. <coughs> if a complaint has been made, the results of any subsequent investigation and remedial action are also recorded. This enables the license holder to demonstrate how a competent level of performance has been regained so that it can be reviewed in subsequent assessment. So you don't lose your license permanently. Within a year or so, you can come back and say that, okay, I have learned from that mistake. Now I want, I'm already doing the same work. So a license can be reissued. So this is in case of, uh, in more serious cases, a recommendation to revoke a license also may be made to the IRSC. So the management may write back to IRSC to say that please revoke his license because it's a very serious case of uh, whatever you say, wrong circuit design or a wrong installation or wrong wiring, which has caused some unsafe condition. And uh, a license is only revoked after an independent review of the circumstances. And there is also an appeals process. So just like Supreme Court and High Court, we have got, you can go back to IRSC to say that what caused you to do the mistake. Either the scope of the work was not clear or either you have not understood from your manager or your manager has said, okay, do it, I'm there. Now he is there only to see that you are there. But after that, he will, take, he will not take any responsibility because he has got a target to complete. He has got a project to complete. He'll say, okay, do it. I am I am I is okay. But when I am I am you are That is an issue. Okay. So a license is only revoked after an independent review. So you can write back to IRSC to say that this was not my fault. This is a pure fault of the installer or the checker or the maintainer or the tester. So like that also you can justify and get off if you are sad, if you are sure that your design is correct. So <clears throat> this is signaling actually. Now, how safe is signaling? I, I think most of the people who are there on the call, they would have traveled by trains they want their trains to reach safely without any accident. They want uh, to sleep in the night on their butts peacefully without any disturbance. They don't want any emergency braking and people to fall down from the top berth and all that. So railway signaling is I think one of the most, just like aviation, railway signaling is one of the most, most, most safety related. And only competent people people who can take full responsibility and who are fully aware can work, including people who are working in metros and all that. There should be people who are already working without taking much precaution. They should be very, very careful and they should be more, more technically aware of what they are doing. You can take a risk as we do normally. When you cut through between two lorries, you take your two wheeler between two lorries or you jump over the bus. So all this you can do, but you know what is the risk. The risk is if you wear a helmet, it's a bit safe, but not fully safe. So once you should be knowing the risk of taking a, a wrong action. If you know the risk and then you are able to manage it, then even though I will not suggest you should do it, but this is sometimes we also do, overtaking a car or a bus or a two wheeler, whatever it is. So I'm comparing it with the road because railway also causes accidents, loss of life. Road also causes the same loss of life. Don't worry about aircraft because there is no life if there is an air crash. Everybody goes there. <laughs> right. So these are the following categories of licenses are being issued by IRSC in the field of signaling design. So now I've come back to only design now the maintenance and all that is separate. So these are the numbers 500, 510, 550, 160, and 100. Similarly, there are other categories of licenses for installation, testing, and other activities, including telecom. So telecom also, they are giving licenses. Right, sir. <laughs> sir, we'll take a five minutes break here and come back. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, I'm sure by nine, it will not be over. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll continue for a few more minutes. People are interested. All are very much interested to listen to you. 
So yeah, nice okay. going on. So we'll continue after nine o'clock. So okay, no problem. All right, sir. Okay. Right, right sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Right, sir. Okay. Shall we start, sir? Uh, two minutes, sir. OK, fine. There is a wonderful question from uh, one person here. Yes. Shashidhar. Hello, sir. Yeah. This be a yes, sir. or only just two hours free session. This is a trailer. <laughs> this, is a, this is a trailer, the main course with Amitabh Bachchan and other people to come. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's sure. Only, it is only an introductory webinar for the yeah. training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, I, what I, we are covering I, in the training, what is the trainer's competency, how you will be able to conduct it, what is the duration, what is the fees, everything will be told at the end. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am also seeing a query uh, uh, answer. Thanks for your lucid information. Yeah. So like, uh, to, uh, thank you, Arvinda. I... Yeah, whoever, uh, from wherever you are, you are in Australia, I think. Uh, anyway. Uh, now, my specific, I don't want to be much uh, uh, this thing, but uh, I have been in training 
in technical training for the lower level of maintaining pe maintenance people in railways. So I'm fully aware of how I should start from right from the basic to make it a bit more interesting. Of course, as the modules progress, you may find me a bit boring because I keep on repeating to make you understand better. But anyway, I think it will be a successful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, sir. We can start. Yeah. I will go to the next slide, sir. Is it okay? uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> now, uh, these are actually IRSC licenses in other fields. One is uh, CAC in signaling, uh, competence assessment checklist. So, what they have done is for every desire, for every license category, they have made a checklist to say that if you need this license, then you should be doing the following activities. So like that, they have got competent assessment checklist for signaling, for telecom, for engineering management, for signaling and telecom factory installation and power supply and distribution <clears throat> and uh, technical investigation. Now, I think people are already aware about what is signaling fine. Telecom, yes, they are aware of telecom because everybody is seeing television, radio, what or what not, mobile and all that. Engineering management. Now, this is something that uh, <clears throat> I don't know how many people understand what is engineering management. Now, engineering management actually says that uh, how to progress with a project with all the, right from the scope, the requirements, the deviations and all this. So how to progress? So what will be the <coughs> competency required to engineering management, like supply of material, installation, and uh, what duration, what time, discuss with the client, when that will be completed, all that will be is engineering management. Then signal and telecom factory installation. Now, signaling equipments are manufactured by different factories. Telecom equipments are also manufactured by different factories. So how they install those, what you say, sub equipments in the main equipment and how they transport it and all these competencies. Power supply and distribution, oh, this is very, very important. Now, uh, this is very important in the sense, whatever signaling design you do, unless you are feeding that 110 volt or 24 volt AC and DC, the system is not going to work. So from where you are going to get the power supply, whether it is going to be a, or if you are in the, let us say an electrified section. So from where you are going to get the power, how reliable is the power? and what other special precautions you need to take with regard to any searches. Yeah, somebody is drawing with the slides, I don't know why. Yeah. Continue, you please continue, sir, I'll be managing them. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine, right. So power supply distribution is exactly from where do you get the power supply, how reliable it is, what sort of earthing facility, what sort of induction, what sort of a, a magnetic interference and all that you need to take care of. So you just can't take your house supply and give it to the rail signaling. Uh, later on, we'll come to know why. And then technical investigation. Now technical investigation is actually a competency to investigate technical accidents or technical incidences in the railway system of working, either due to a equipment fault or either due to a circuit fault or either due to a wrong operation by the driver, operator, signaler, whatever it is. So you need to be competent, like how to go into the details of any technical uh, incidences. So these are the various, uh, yeah. So license uh, prerequisites, <clears throat> like that if you need to go to a particular license, let us say signaling design verifier, then you need to already have the 510 and the 550 license. So like that, this states that if you, just like your vehicle driving, if you need a truck driver license, you should already have a low low utility or a high utility vehicle. And then just a scooter, a scooter license will not be able to go for the, with that with the scooter license, you will not be able to drive a truck. So heavy engine or low, uh, <coughs> so different categories. So in the same way to have a 160, you must be having your 510 and you must also be having your 550. So these are different categories. So once you have your 510 and then you have your 550, then you can go in for your 160 design verifier. So if you think that, okay, I'm verifying a design, that means I should be competent to know what is the design. I should be knowing the principles of the design, then only I can verify it. So just because I have done, the, I have got a license, I cannot just go and verify it. So verification is a 
higher level of competency than the design uh, next slide sir <clears throat> Uh, yes, Arvinda Maurya, you can apply for 510 and 160. Yes, you can apply. But uh, <clears throat> provided you've got sufficient evidences. Right. In the same way, you were 1.3.190 uh, uh, signaling testing in charge. Now, to become a test in charge, you should be having a functional tester's license. You should have an electronic system license tester and a principal's tester license. So all the, if you have all these licenses, then you can go into the next one. So like that signaling team leader, you must currently hold, sir, uh, yeah, you must currently hold or have previously held a license covering the activity of the team that you are leading. So you must be, let us say, if you are a signaling team leader for design, then you should be having already the design, uh, uh, principal designer license and the checker license so that you can be able to guide the team correctly. Then only you can get your signaling team leader. If you no longer hold the prerequisite license, okay, you know, you are not having the designer license or the uh, principal designer license or the checker license, you must demonstrate how you keep up to date and maintain sufficient technical competency to effectively lead the team and respond to technical queries about the activity. So if you're not able, to, if you're not holding the license, then you should be able to technically demonstrate so to say that, okay, I don't have the license, but still I'm able to technically come uh, to demonstrate that I'm competent and I am doing such a part, such a part of my role in the design package or in the project. Then appropriate categories are typically signal maintainer, signal fault finder, signal maintenance tester, signaling installation technician, and signaling installation operative. So all these are licenses <coughs> to become a signaling team leader. So if you are becoming a signaling team leader for maintainer, then for maintenance, then you should be having this 14110, 14120, 14160, or 12220 and 12210. So all these are licenses which you need to possess in order to become a team leader because a team leader means he's manager. He is aware of the requirements and he is aware of the system and he is able to guide the team correctly. Next slide, sir. <laughs> and the same way for telecom manager, you should normally or currently hold a license covering the activity of the team or if you are not having previously held a telecom license, you must provide evidence of your experience and qualification in the telecom activity of the team with your license application. If you no longer hold the prerequisite license, you must demonstrate how you are able to keep that. So same, if you're not able to, if you're not having a particular license, but you're still able to demonstrate to say that, yes, I'm maintaining this, I'm maintaining a record, I'm taking all these precautions, then you can be eligible for the license. So these are certain prerequisites, right, sir? Next. Yeah. <clears throat> now we are starting with the signaling design assistant license. So this is uh, the, what you say, the lowest category of design. It's the lowest category of design, <clears throat> which you need to start as a, if you are in the design field. Signaling design assistant license. So let us say this is a two-wheeler license. Then you'll come to four-wheeler. So assessment checklist. So this is the checklist which the, uh, the assessor for your license will uh, review to say that, okay, what you are, whether the work that you are doing, are you satisfying all these requirements? So what you say, the first one is determine and review the requirements. So he will first see what, whether you are able to satisfy condition one. Now condition one has got 1.1. Obtain sufficient relevant standards and technical information to understand clearly the objectives. Now, if suppose somebody comes to you and gives you a design and says that, please, can you do, design this? So what you should know, you should know what is the objective of the design? Why you are going to design this? What importance or what project, What what is the final? output of this design that you are doing. And then has he shared with you any technical information that you are not aware of? Let us say he's talking about some earth leakage detector. Can you do a design for earth leakage detector? Now, I don't know what is an earth leakage detector, then how you will design. So what you should, what you should be doing, he should be supplying you the technical manual of the earth leakage detector to say that, okay, this is an ELD. This is the way the inputs are given. This is the power supply for the inputs. These are the output terminals, and this will be the other terminals to measure the standard reference earth and whatever it contains of. 
So this technical information, are you aware of? If you are not aware, then you should be asking for it. Then relevant standards. So relevant standards. So if there is a, let us say, I'm continuing with earth leakage detector. So is this earth leakage detector a standard equipment or is it brought from the market? Can you use equipments which are used from the, which are brought from the market? No. Any railway system will always need pre-approved equipments. Even in Indian railways or in metros or in UK or in Australia, they don't go for any market purchase. They've got a list of approvers where, from where you need to purchase the equipment and install them because they are sure that those equipments are reliable. So suppose in my house, the bulb fuse, I go to the market and purchase whatever bulb I want. But in railways, you can't do it. For a signal, you cannot go to a shop and purchase a signal bulb and come back and replace it. No. So first you should look into the approved manufacturers, find out from the approved manufacturers. It would have gone through some rigorous testing. So just like a military or a defense equipment, it would have gone through rigorous testing and it would have also given you the <clears throat> advantage of reliability. It will not fail. It will not, uh, what you say, cause any wrong operation. So that will <coughs> help so what you should know, do is you should obtain first sufficient relevant standards and technical information to understand clearly the objective. So then only you should be pro progressing towards a design. Not because your manager says, Are design kar do, kar diya, aisa nahi chalega. Kya chahiye, kyon chahiye, kaun sa equipment laga ka, uska power supply kya hai, what is the changes, what will be the variation, what happens if the power supply uh, voltage falls down, all that you should be aware before you do the design. That's what they say. Next, technical requirements are clear and contain the all the essential data. You identify all the project documentation is complete, up to date and relevant to the design. So once you are given a particular design or a particular activity, you should take all this information from your manager or from the person who is giving you the design. So just don't do it on paper and say, that design ho gaya khatam. Find out why it is required, what equipment, how safe, reliable, approved, voltage variations, fluctuations, and all other factors that come along, temperature requirements, heating requirements, all this you should be. Otherwise, as people are now doing, I will not say what they are doing is wrong, but they are not following the process. That's what I can say. Then next one says, identify key features and constraint in the design. Now you have designed and you shoot it to your manager. Okay, fine. Aapka job ho gaya. Aaj ka job ita target ho gaya. Ya next month your salary will come. That's a different issue. But identify the key features and constraints. So what you have done, have you designed it? Yes. But what are the constraints in your design? There, are, there, will, there will be a few constraints. The voltage fluctuation should not be there. A frequency variation should not be there or it should not, a temperature variation also may cause a wrong operation. An electromagnetic interference also may cause a wrong operation. So all this, have you taken it in your design? You identify features required for the design. You take into account the manufacturer's design constraints and application guidelines. The manufacturer would have said, please place it where there is no sunlight or please place it where the temperature does not increase beyond 40 degrees. Uh, you cannot take it and place it in the center of a location somewhere in Nagpur where the temperature is 50 or 60. The equipment may cause a wrong function. We don't know. So this is something that you need to take care of. If you are not aware, find out. Check with your manager, check with your company and go back to the producer or to the supplier and say that uh, I'm using this for a section where there is high temperature, what can I do? How can I protect? Can I give some heat dissipation, some arrangement? Because I don't want this equipment to malfunction. So all this will allow you to say that, okay, you are aware and you have taken the necessary action. Next slide, sir. You check the understanding of the requirements. So yours, first you, you have, your understanding you have checked. Yes, I want to do a design. I want to install this earth leakage detector. I want to install it at 24 volt. It should be checking whatever it wants. Then your customer and your team. So you should check the understanding of the requirements. So if there is somebody else who is doing an earth leakage detector, find out, is he using the same equipment? 
Is it a bit different? Is he going to use the same voltage? Is it a bit different? What is the power consumption? Fuse, everything. You check and obtain agreement that the requirements are interpreted correctly. You confirm your understanding of the specified design methodology and you can meet the, your requirements and your employer's procedures. Now, I'll actually, if I start explaining this, it is going to take a lot and a lot of time. I think it will be four hours. <laughs> so what I'll do is, uh, I'll just read through and uh, you can come back because you can check, uh, what, you, what it says is you check and obtain agreement that the requirements are interpreted correctly. That's what I said. So when your manager says, do it, so don't do it. First to check, take it in writing or give him a mail to say that I'm doing it as for this. Is it okay? Are you happy? Is the client happy? Will you, you confirm your understanding of the specified design methodology. Then how do I do a design? Do I do it on CAD? Do I do it on my micro station or do I do it on AutoCAD or do I just take a pen and pencil and draw a sketch and give you? I don't know. How do you want me to do? Then once I do it, do you want it as a drawing number? Do you want it as a permanent record? Or do you want it to keep it in your file or throw it into the, into the bin later? So you can meet the requirements and your employer's procedures. So employer also will have some procedure. Okay, this design will be done. It will be kept safely somewhere and it will be printed, produced, Xeroxed and issued to the customer, client, whatever it is. So that is very, very important. You should check the understanding. Then agree to the time scales of the work. Right now he has asked you to do a earth leakage detector. The first thing is you will ask if uh, you go as per an IRSC process is, sir, when do you want it? Today, tonight? day after tomorrow, three days later, whatever you want. Find out, confirm and agree. Give him a mail to say that, yes, I have understood the design scope and I will issue the design by three days from now or two days from now. No, don't accept. If you think that you need more time because judgment is yours. And uh, tomorrow, once you have committed three days, then three days may naiva, then you go back to him and say, sir, I need another two more days. Then that fellow will really fire you to say, what is your estimating? You are not aware of what is the scope of work. Just like uh, certain buildings, they do some, uh, construct some buildings and leave it uh, unplastered and without any finishing and say ready, that is not correct. And somebody will say, okay, by December, you will get it. That December is over. Next year, December has come, still not ready. So that is okay. Sir, uh, sir sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, there are some suggestions that the, your uh, informations are very valuable, yes. very valid informations. Yes, sir. And they don't want us to go slowly. They can. They wanted to go as far in, in more in detail. So what I would request you is you can continue up to 8.45. At yes, 8.45, we'll stop. And we'll ask the doubts up to the portion what you are covered. Okay. Then again, we have the same session next uh, Sunday we'll have. One more session right. we'll have. Right, sir. Excellent. That's, that's, uh, that's what that's, I was that's... expecting because uh, <laughs> two hours. Uh, <laughs> or even, uh, I think next Sunday we have one more webinar so we can have on Sunday, uh, Saturday. Yeah, yeah. We can have a Saturday or any working oh, yeah. day also. If, uh, if, no, uh, working everybody... day generally people will not be able to join. So ah, yeah, that's fine. Then. Prepared yeah. on Saturday, in fact. Yeah, okay, so sir. We have one more webinar on project management on Sunday. Right, sir. Okay, thank you. Kindly continue. Yeah, Kindly. yeah, yeah. So, what I was saying was, like, agree to the time scales of work. So, you, what you confirm is the time allocated to the work. So, you decide the time and you tell. Okay, I'll do it in three days, four days, five days, whatever it is. You should know what how much time it will take to draw a circuit or whatever you need to do. And then you should be able to communicate to your manager and get his acceptance. And if you're not able to do it due to some reason, then you should have a reason why you're not able to do it. Either there was some information lacking or the client has not come back or you were, tech you were told that, okay, two days, by two days, you'll get the technical information for this equipment. And the two days is over and you have not got the technical information, then you can justify to say that, sir, I asked three days. But assuming that, I'll get the information by two days, but this time I have not got the information in two days. So I need X plus two. Whenever you give the information, let us say one week later, I need two more days to complete it. So go by that time frame, decide your time frame and communicate to your manager. So please do not 
shortcut. This is safety and is very, very important. And this will be regular, actually, this will be analyzed by the competent assessor and the workplace assessor during your IRSC evidence. They will say, have you communicated? Yes. Have you followed it? Yes. If you have not followed it, why? And if there is a reason why, have you communicated the reason why back to the manager or to the person who is who has given you the assignment? Then has the person accepted it? Or has he reverted back to say that, are you talking about bad things? Whatever. I will not say the language, but they will say, are every time you ask for two more days and two more days. So like that. So you should be careful. You should actually analyze how much time you require to do the design and communicate, get acceptance. And if there is a change, communicate once again, get once again acceptance. Or if there is a disacceptance, discuss with the manager and find out why. Why is not happy when you say two more days? So this is a very, very, I think this is a very important one. Agree for the time scales of work and which we normally don't do. So you do it, do it. In two days, it will be done today. It will be done today, whatever. And it will be done today, then the quality will be poor. The design may have some error. And he'll come back and say, hey, one day I've done it, then it's wrong. Then do it again. Then what about the money for doing it? The client will say, I've already paid you once. How can I keep on paying you? And well, that will be a problem. Right. <clears throat> so this is 1.5. We are into the same one, assessment checklist. Throughout the activities covered by the license, you work effectively with colleagues, clients, suppliers, and the public. And be aware of the needs and concerns of others, especially where related to diversity and equality. Now, you effectively work with colleagues. So if your colleague is also doing a similar design or he's doing some other part of the design, then you effectively coordinate with him to find out who, till when, till where he has developed his design and how much you need to interface with him. Because if you want to, let us, I don't know, if people are working in metros and relay rooms and all that, relay room will have a lot of designs. There'll be a, there'll be a signaling, uh, what you say, relay circuits. There'll be a button circuits. There'll be a route interlocking circuit. There'll be a finally indication circuits. So if you are doing indication circuit, you need to find out what the interlocking fellow is doing and you need that fellow needs to coordinate with the button circuit uh, design fellow. So all this will need a lot of coordination. So you should be coordinating with your team. It is not individual member. As an individual, you can't do it. Even in today's cricket match, I thought both Shardul Thakur played a wonderful innings. So it is a team effort. So don't uh, think that I will do it and I will get the credit. <clears throat> so you should be aware with effectively with colleagues, clients, suppliers. So you may need to speak to the supplier also to find out oh, okay, jo ELD apne diya, okay, what is it? How it how it will work, what is the voltage level? So whether it will be satisfied for my requirements, I want to use it in Kashmir where it is minus four degrees, or I want to use it in Nagpur where it is minus 40, uh, plus 45, or I want to use it in Badrachalam where it is plus 50. So will it work to all the temperatures or will it cause some issue? Or I want to use it in uh, whatever, wherever you say, Goa, Chennai, Mumbai, where there is heavy rain from June to August, uh, everything gets flooded. So will it work with water? Will it work underwater? or will it allow water to go inside it or water will not come out of it, whatever it is. <laughs> so you should be aware of all this. So I will, I'm only giving some raw examples that you should be technically aware of what the supplier says about the equipment and the public also. And uh, be aware of the needs and concerns of others where related to diversity and equality. Now, uh, a public, uh, now this public is actually people. Now people, why it is important here is let us say you are doing a location design and this location is coming on the station platform. Then you need to find out whether can you provide it on the station platform? I am not aware. Then if you provide it on the station platform, will the passengers running towards the train, will they crash with it? Will they get hit by it? Or if somebody is, uh, what you say, jumping from the train, walking very fast towards the exit gate, will he hit the location case? All this is with public interface. Maybe uh, it can be a location case or it can be a signal or it can be a PA announcement which is hanging from the uh, top on the station platform. So all this you need to check and be comfortable that, okay, this will not be harming the public. This will not create interface to the public. And uh, you should not, uh, normally when uh, people are in the silent zone, you should not keep a loudspeaker there. This for telecommunication. So like that, you should be aware 
of what is the public requirements be aware of the needs and concerns of others uh, this also others especially were related to diversity and equality <clears throat> throughout the activities covered by this license you consistently comply with the obligations of license holder and work in an ethical manner now this is very very important please work in an ethical manner now by ethical manner i do not mean corruption i mean whatever you do you do it with full honesty and integrity <clears throat> so be honest tell them what you want commit a date integrity jis tarikh ko bol diya us tarikh ko submit karna hai so please ensure that you do it integrity and if you say okay you call me at 10 o'clock in the morning be available at 10 o'clock don't have any reason to say that okay i am not there i am busy or i am not available today if you do it. then respect for life law and the public good then accuracy and rigor and leadership and communication so these are very very important even for the lowest level of license whichever license you have of course people most of the people i think working in the railways will have already have it but if you don't have it then you should be improving on this honesty and integrity respect for life law and the public good accuracy and rigor the what you say driving on the wrong side please don't do don't do it at least respect for life law and the public good <clears throat> accuracy and rigor and leadership and communication so next slide sir yeah this is uh, with the next item 2.1 produce simple signaling designs and other references let us say documentation or software files so it can be a design or it can be reference it can be a documentation you ensure that the design complies with the current safety requirements and that you take action to minimize any importing any risk you take into account the need to contribute to sustainable development and environmental impact of your design <clears throat> i think uh, this is getting a bit more english but if you do think that uh, you need any sorry any more information then you can revert back yes bpt will be shared to everyone if you think that you are not understanding anything then uh, sorry uh, not understanding certain portions then you can come back to me i'll explain it in more yeah, simpler english and then you take into account the need to contribute to sustainable development and environmental impact of your design so if you are doing any design so please take into the uh, account the sustainable development and environmental so let us not uh, keep uh, some transformer or something which is uh, creating lot of noise which is creating lot of uh, electromagnetic interference with all the other equipments and say okay this is my system isko chalao nahi to feko jo bhi hai so please don't do like that so what you do is you check the environmental impact you check whether it will create lot of noise sound and all that and then take necessary precautions and this is particularly i don't know do people uh, have seen any level crossing gates they would have seen if there is a level crossing gate and if there is a train coming towards the tra track then the level crossing will close and as the level crossing closes there is a very big buzzer or alarm or a very heavy sound so all this sound during day time is fine but during night time if you are sleeping and uh, 12 o'clock there is a train moving in the section and this will go 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 and then you think are kya ho raha hai so that is environmental impact so what you need to do you need to reduce the sound or you should have what you whatever you say day day level and night level of different sound levels in your design whatever you need to do you need to do or at least ask the master to control the voltage reduce the voltage whatever you do sometimes indication panels also in night time it is very bright in day time it's a bit dull so there were there were some buttons day and night buttons on the panel which will control the different indication voltages if you press the day one it will be a bit more bright and if you press the night one the indication voltage from 24 will come to 20 22 or 18 so like that there were different controls on the panel so this is one example of siemens panel i am talking about so you need to check that and take necessary precautions and apply configuration control to your design i assume that uh, configuration control people are able to understand 
Now, what, what exactly is meant by configuration control is <clears throat> every design should have an authorized a drawing number. It can be your own company number or it can be something given by the client or it can be something which is required by the project, whatever it is, but it should have a drawing number. And as you go on modifying it, it should have a version also. If you, if you are giving a A version today and there is a modification, you need to give a B version tomorrow. And as you further progress, the final may come up to C, D, E, that depends on the number of iterations the drawing undergoes. So please do not issue any drawing without a configuration control. Configuration control can be anything. It can be number, it can be uh, letters, or it can be 1.0, 2.0, or 0.1, or 0.1A, whatever it is. So without a drawing number and without a configuration control, please do not issue any design because the changes will not be correctly captured. Today you have given A, tomorrow you are giving a same A, third day you are giving the same A, then that fellow will think, Are well, which is correct? So that will be a bit of a problem. So apply configuration control. Suppose you are named it as A, A1, A2, A3, whatever you do, A.0, A0, 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 so please have a drawing number and a version number in all your drawings. It can be local, it can be company based, or it can be project based, or you yourself can develop and say that, okay, today I'm issuing A, tomorrow if there is any change, I'm going to issue A1. Without a configuration control, the project will not accept and you are also not in the correct path to issue any drawing. And third one is carry out a self-check. Now, this is very, very important. I don't know how many people are doing it. Once you have done the design, you need to check your design. You need to carry out a self-check. You need to say that, okay, I have checked as per my analysis and I have found the design correct. I need to do a cross, a self-check. Without a self-check, it is not a correct process of submitting it for further review and for a final issue. Right, sir. Next slide, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So confirm, uh, uh, confirm design work does not breach communication or cyber security. Confirm that your design work does not breach communication breach communication or cyber security. Now this is a bit explained below. You can confirm that the security requirements, regulation standards and government agency advice as agreed with the license signaling designer or signaling principal designer has been used in preparation and delivery of the designs. Uh, now this is important in the sense, if the client says, please get it done through a competent designer, fine. Your company does not have a competent designer, but the company is getting it done through you. That means you are not following the standards. You are not following the regulations. You are not following the rules. That is one. Second one is the company is getting done through you, but finally it is getting somebody else who has got a license a signature. What will happen now? that your error is now transferred to the person who has signed as a license holder. Is it correct? Not correct. If he's a perfect license holder, then he should be thoroughly checking your design, giving you a feedback and then only signing for it. Otherwise you are breaching your protocols. You are breaching the requirements. You are breaching your standards. Tomorrow, tomorrow, if there is something wrong with the design, your company will be held responsible and you as an individual also will come into trouble. Then confirm the required protocols for use of software, hardware and transferable hardware. So what do you use? AutoCAD, MicroStation, whatever you do. Word, Excel, Paint, whatever you want to do. Then hardware. So how do you do it? And how, do, how are you going to issue it? Are you going to issue it as a soft copy? Are you going to issue it as a PDF? Are you going to issue a signed copy? And uh, once you issue as a soft copy, then you are not correct because that soft copy can be altered or deleted. Anything can be done by the client. So what do you do? 
you should actually justify it with three. You should be doing a PDF, signing it and sending him a black and white copy and also transferring the same CAD file, ASA soft copy so that he can store it in a server and also sending a, a signed PDF copy. So he should be having three. He should be having an original CAD file, a soft copy, a signed PDF copy so that he is not, he is sure that both of them are matching. And the third one is the signed paper copy, which you need to send it by post or whatever you do, either you hand over by courier or, because without this, there is no proof that the design is authentic. You do something CAD, it goes to X-Fellow, that X-Fellow will think, Are, to galti ho gaya. I am going to change some contact or some back contact proving all that he will do that finally it is not there in your final design then when installation and testing that fellow say who has put this back contact you will say no i have not done it is not in my sheet so it becomes a total mess so you follow and then you also follow how it should be communicated to him. <clears throat> whether there will be a whatever common path how it will be shared, whether there can be a SharePoint path or there can be a server which is common for you and the client where you can upload your drawings and say, okay, my drawings are uploaded there. So all this communication also you should ensure proper. Naito, you have sent it, that fellow has not received. Or you have sent it, that fellow server has crashed. Or you have sent it, somebody else has accepted, accessed it, changed something, all this. So whatever method you do, you need to document it and get it agreed with the client. So please do not uh, draw something and send it by post or email or uh, because it can be altered, modified, deleted, changed without any proper version. <clears throat> All this will lead to a lot of risk during installation, testing, delay. Mm. You also ensure that the documents you prepare have the appropriate security marking and that you follow the controls, uh, controls, the marking requests like configuration control, use of appropriate security software and protection of passwords and access codes. So if you, if you think that uh, that gentleman should not access or only the relevant person can access, then you can security lock it, put some password to the file or whatever the process is and do it and inform him to say that this is the password to open that file. So please ensure all this because just transferring it by emails, PDF, CAD, all this is not correct. It, it does not give the security to the drawing that you have done. Anybody can access, anything may happen, damage, destroy, modify, alter, create a wrong impact and that impact will come back to you and your company. Next, sir. Sir, we'll stop here. Yes, sir. And, uh, uh, you can take up the questions some people have put. Uh, even now, yeah. they can put some questions. Of course, it is half done. So Not even can... half, sir. Not even half, sir. My assumption is it is only 40% done. Okay, okay. Anyway, we are hoping that we'll be covering the 60% next week. That we are planning <laughs> it on Saturday. I'll be sharing right, the link to join. Uh, yes, register sir. And join on next Saturday. It's because Sunday, we are already having another webinar. So probably okay, we may have to do it on Saturday. So, okay. Just uh, give me give me a two minute break. I'll come back. Huh? Yes, sir. Ah, no problem. So yeah. uh, friends, uh, really it's a wonderful session by Krithivasan sir. I really appreciate his explanation power and his explanation uh, uh, interest what he has taken. It is a wonderful session that you had. And it is also wonderful to see that people are more interested to know more in detail. That yes. is also highly appreciated. So yeah, I would correct. request the participants to join next week on Saturday. That is on uh, 23rd of uh, January. I will share the link on the LinkedIn to register again and rejoin. And today, whatever session is done, I will be sharing the PPT and also the recording of today's session. Kindly ask your friends also to join. Next week, we'll be covering the remaining part. And a very important point of what are the fees? What is the duration when the trainings are conducted? Now, coming to the doubts, sir, there are few doubts here. If I go in detail, uh, there are some doubts here. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Not, not getting the audience. Kindly keep your uh, uh, this one uh, mute, please. 
Santoshi Pasara Puri. Please keep your mic uh, in mute, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it applicable signaling professionally? Is it applicable for rolling stock train control management system? Uh, no, not applicable for rolling stock. IRSC is only for signaling engineers. So rolling so stock may have, yeah, rolling control. stock may have a different, rolling stock may have a different requirement, but I'm not aware. I can find out. Control management system, train control management system. Train control management system is different. It is so totally based on uh, railway signaling controls only. It doesn't, uh, uh, of course, if you think rolling stock, then hot axle box detector is something which is covered as a part of signaling. Okay. Okay, but uh, nothing with regard to rolling stock. Actually, I don't know the question why rolling stock, what uh, uh, they do it, but anyway, no. I need to find out. Hmm? No, no problem. Yeah. And uh, I am working in Kochi Metro as a manager signaling and telecom uh, train control in maintenance. I want to apply yeah. for engineering manager, license 7.18.110A. Uh, I yeah. am in the process of completing the assessment checklist. So I'm eligible. You can answer to his questions. Yeah, he is. A, yeah, you are eligible, provided you have satisfied the condition of uh, as a manager. You should be already aware of the minimum requirements of uh, the license that you need to hold. As a manager, uh, what you are doing, I think uh, you are only managing the project management as such, or are you getting the designs installed and tested and all that? I don't know what is your role of manager. If you can explain what exactly is a manager, don't go by the designation given by the Kochi Metro. The Metro, they will everybody will be called a GM or general manager or manager. But don't go by the designation, but see what is your role. If you can tell me what is your role and come back exactly to say that, sir, this is what I am doing, then I can look into the evidences to say that what else you need to do. But I don't think that without having the basic qualification of designer and the principal designer, you will be able to get into the manager license. <clears throat> okay, and uh, uh, this course of two hours is free session uh, that I have already answered. This is actually, it is the introductory session, as I showed, it is only a trailer where the main picture will come out in during the training. It's only a training session, uh, introduction to the IRC license, know-how about IRC license, and we'll be conducting the training, which will be giving the particulars at the end of the session with uh, due consideration for the fees also. I really appreciate your interest to join this. By today's session, we'll be share, sharing it with the, uh, can I apply simultaneously for 1.1.510 and 1.1.610? Yeah, yeah, you can apply, provided you have sufficient evidences to support both. And one thing which I actually would like to tell you is that uh, one, once you have done your 510, then you need to do some 160 work under mentorship. Then only it is more justifiable for you to get your 160. So if you are without a 510 license and without a 160 license, you will not be able to apply for both at the same time. First, you should get your 510, then do some 160 checking under mentorship of the, if you are having a 510, then it means you will be able to do only location designs and very minor, uh, not uh, con not into relay room and control tables and all that. So if you have your 510, first you go for 510, do your designer license, get your, do the designs, and then start doing your checking under mentorship and then apply for 160. So my assumption is if you do not have any license now, your 510 may take at least six to eight months and your 160 may take at least one more year from now to complete. Fine, good, thank you, sir. Sir, is there any course for MSDAC engineer? I mean, do you mean, is it IRSC license course or the technical course? I you don't can know, what is MSD? Yeah, you can. What is the MSDAC? I don't. Multi-section digital access counter, sir. Oh, no, uh, no, actually, I don't know why he's calling himself MSDAC engineer, because for me, a multi-section uh -huh. digital access counter is only an equipment which is installed in signaling. Yeah, I mean, what exactly he wants, whether he's wanted to know the license scheme for MSDAC, multi-section digital access counter engineers, or the training on multi-section digital access counters. Uh, you can know. unmute yourself and tell, please tell. A7CCD746, if he's available, 
he can tell okay fine no problem i think he's uh, not available uh how about uh, the going i we are going next week again i'll be sending you the link on uh, linkedin and also to your mail id all of your mail id to including the today's record like the ppt slides still know whatever you have covered please do join next week for further information on public demand there are two episodes the first episode the hero has just ran away and next episode he will hero will come with we don't know whether new new hero new heroine or uh, <laughs> old heroine that you need yeah. to wait yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, let me go irc agree with the uh, we have a information in website irs irc but here but no one is uh, there to explain there is a reason we have we have arranged this webinar where mr krithivasan sir is the expert in this who has obtained the license and also we have trained the people who have organized this training the webinar only for that followed by the training okay uh, i am our, a senior sir uh, yeah, yeah and uh, if we are working on er tms projects are we eligible for applying the license eps please let me know how what is the procedure yeah okay so what this gentleman has to give us some detail about what is it what is he working on here tms project okay is he doing the design and is he following the standard requirements like asking for client specification or equipment specification and what exactly is he doing or is he only taking instruction from his manager and bellies install or check in or whatever he does i will not make it a bit uh, what you say more <laughs> simple no problem. I mean, but uh, he really should you uh, know he should actually come back anybody who has got a query about whether he is eligible for license or not should come back with exactly what work is being done now how is yeah. the how is the process how is his company process and how he he himself is doing it for the past one year or two years or three years is he just taking the instructions or is he following the manual or is he following the bullet in or is he following somebody who has done three years back and say jo usne teen saal pehle kiya main abhi karta hu aise so what he is doing how he is doing that is more important before right. i there, there is a question from uh, diksha that she says that i am a senior section engineer in signaling department at southeastern uh, central railway i am yeah. working in metro rail signaling i mean uh, she wanted to know whether she is eligible for or she can get this license no no that is different i think diksha acharya has said i am a senior section engineer in signal department and this has come from kate jangaya she says i am yeah. working in the metro signaling maintenance please teach me how to get irc license now Well, once this uh, slide is shared i think people can go through it to see that uh, okay where they are fitting and where they are not able to do it and then come back to me individually with queries so that i can guide them to say that what evidences they need to collect further for this irc yeah. licensing hmm? okay yeah. same time uh, i will be keeping the same time uh, definitely we will yeah. be keeping the same time as far as uh, today's uh, saturday only thing is saturday it is between Seven to nine. Yeah, uh, yeah, I will be going with that. Yeah, okay. And, Diksha, uh, I think uh, somebody somebody wanted to speak. Huh? Diksha, was it? Yes. Sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, tell me. Uh, sir, was, sir, I was looking for the module A preparation. I was looking forward at it, and I was be, I was reading green books for a long time, but uh, uh, due to unavailability of the textbooks, I was not able to read the correct context. so i was looking forward this presentation for us the preparation only so i need to ask you if there is a textbook available in india for the preparation of module a exam for the irsc uh, diksha no, you need, need, with that, that diksha you yeah. need to you need to wait for episode 2 diksha you need <laughs> okay, to wait for okay, episode 2 yes yeah, yeah. you need to <laughs> okay, wait for okay, episode 2 and uh, yeah and one more thing is uh, once we get through this initial licensing then we will be starting the classes for module 1 also okay and uh, it will okay, be we okay, will sir. be discussing uh, we will be discussing the principles and all that and as far as i know no module is covered by a single book okay <laughs> so okay. you, uh, you will need to go through um, the presentations that uh, follow this uh, licensing uh, module sir, process sir then... uh, one more thing so there will be any certification courses this year also for the modules 
or there would be the same um, uh, certification that has been done in last year that exams and uh, all that or there will be different uh, certifications this year diksha there are certification course are different here certification course for railway signaling is different than certification of irsc module so there are two are different things here so you need to attend this next module next episode next week to get the more clarity you will get more clarity on different modules what are the different modules which are compulsory module which are optional module and what you need to study for each module you will get complete information on next saturday please do attend okay, and sir, will, thank you sir and i will give you information provided if you get 10 people to attend this training <laughs> okay sure sir sure sir will do definitely will do sir ha ka push asha asa kaam karo yaar i am working in metro signaling maintenance please uh, teach me how to get irc license no once again i am working in railways i am just trying to cope up with nahi 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 diksha aapka nahi hai kuch koi dusre ka hai okay ye kaate ye kaate jangaiya ka hai i am working in metro signaling maintenance so what is what are you doing in maintenance first we should have a description first you should know what you are doing and are you doing it as per the discussion that we had and then you can tell me what license you want you cannot go into design because you are in the maintenance field but you can go into the basic maintenance uh, uh, licenses that you need to go through the license category to find out what exactly you need to certify Fine. but if you tell, uh, if, if you tell me what you are doing in maintenance what activity you are doing then i can guide you better and uh, if we are working on year time is project are we eligible for applying license if yes please let me know how to proceed please attend the second yeah, exactly. session that is one and you i need to know what work you are doing working is i am actually working in aps rtc what does it mean am i a bus driver am i a bus conductor or am i a traffic manager or am i a ticket checker what does it mean i am working on year tms project but what work design maintenance installation testing commissioning certifying or repairing i don't know so okay. so please let us not uh, what you say go by the designations given by the company so let us find out what exactly you are doing if i am a ticket checker i cannot say i am a tc he will say either are you a tc in railways or are you a tc in rtc or are you <laughs> whatever it is so i we need to be more clear i brought our role in the project so uh, please, uh, yeah, i did not and, uh, i did not see the license procedure for oh sir presently it is only for the signaling and telecommunication for oh probably he will search in the site and come back to you for signaling and uh, oh for uh, rolling stock for pva everything he will come back Uh, in the site from the site he he can get the information equally you are also can you can also get the information from irsc site website yeah yeah and uh, can we suggest uh, uh, sir uh, i want to get a <laughs> designers license please attend the second session i am an I, irsc officer does having irsc license for irsc officer is advantages if so how yes it is advantages <laughs> sir uh, with regard to mani rupavati if uh, they are, if i think uh, still available online yes it is advantages having an irsc license first of all you can evaluate your uh, team or your assistants work more effectively and second one is you can set your own standards and the third one is if you are aware of the design principles and the design regulations i mean if you are uh, having an irsc design then uh, it will be more helpful and the system will improve overall i would prefer that everybody goes through the irsc licensing scheme yeah and they get the proper no, license uh, to question, improve the system can i just interrupt here sir i am rupavati i am an irsc yeah. officer currently working as a deputy csc project in southern railway actually yeah. my doubt is irsc is equivalent to irsc that is no. what is my doubt No, no, no. IRSSC okay. is something which is given by UPSC for direct railway signaling officers. IRSC yeah. is an institute where, where you can, uh, if you have, uh, let us say, you have worked for uh, I don't know, ten years, twelve years now. If you are a deputy CST, yeah, you yeah, can, I am. You can, 
yeah you can go directly for the uh, associate member or member member of irsc you can apply to get a membership of the irsc okay. and then and uh, if you need to go to the li- through the license yes it will be very useful if you are okay. uh, let us say in the construction or in the projects where you need to evaluate the what you say the contractors the circuits which come for your signature or for which uh, comes finally for your sign off so that uh, that time you can always uh, what you say uh, you can twist the contractor to say that who has done the design what principles he has used from where did you get the scope who has signed the plan so all that competencies and all that it will help you to analyze and it will improve the system better uh, but it will uh, take lot of of effort from your end that's what is my thinking uh, roboti here uh, let me mention it will be very easy to get a license being in the railways you will okay. get all the documents okay 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 right it will be easy But for you to get it required is it required that is my question is it for needed india, for us for indian railways it is not required if you have a plan to leave the railways and join some private organizations yes you can okay. have you will have the value okay 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 fine 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 But how does you, it does it, you does do it have work? A, Yeah. Does it have yeah, a global implication? The, like yeah. yeah, it will have. It will have a global implication, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Okay. If we are planning, it will, it will have a global to, implication. If we are planning to go to UK and settle in UK with the Indian, I mean, with the railway signaling, definitely okay. you can process an IRS license. It will be. It is worth to have it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. But uh, can you, sir? Next question is from Salman. Can you suggest IRC assessor who can do my assessment from IRC approved list? Yes, we can suggest you. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have the mail ID with us. Next week, I'll be telling you my mail ID. So you can contact us off the line. We'll we'll definitely let you. How no, no, how to apply the IRC license installation cadre? the complete webinar is only on that how to apply the irsc license please attend the second episode where when the door is closed when the satan is coming out god is coming will be shown in the next episode yeah. sir difference between irsc exam and license just brief please yes i will be we will be taking it in the next week we we'll definitely apprise you of what you mean by irsc licensing and why what you mean by I receive modules certification. We'll be taking it the next week. So the people who are attending the course from uh, are from different backgrounds, like designers, verification, validation, field engineers. How are you going to drive the course and related to everyone? Whether the course deals with the technical training or any process, it is both. It is both. The especially the licensing is more on documentation and process. So, Mr. Krithivasan sir will be telling about the documentation and the process, and also he will give you the technical information for all the different categories. You can attend if you are aspiring for a license. Please share your mail ID, sir. Yes, it will be shared next week. You need to attend the next week also. I am a scheme plan designer. Am I eligible for one 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 five zero 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 one, sir? Zero zero. Yes, you are eligible, but uh, I want to know how you are doing the scheme plan now. Whether you have got your inputs and all this, are you uh, what you say? Are you analyzing the, your inputs and are you taking whatever precautions you need to you need to take with the design and all that? Yes, you are eligible for five one. Good sir. Uh, I have an ARTC license. Uh, I do have logbook related ARTC, but not in IRC format. I am in a dilemma del- whether. to transfer ir artc logbook to irc logbook no, no i think artc the... artc is a bit different and irc is a bit different you should have two logbooks even though the work can repeat in in both yeah good uh, so the people who are attending the course are from different backgrounds like designing this one okay theek ho gaya then uh, ab ho gaya i have eb ho gaya sir please suggest the textbook for preparation of the module a kindly help us there is no prescribed textbook for module it is a knowledge we, which we need to gain from reading different books different yes. fields yes. and different areas yes. and also yes. you it is lucky that you are getting a person like krithivasan who is teaching you all these topics you please learn and uh, definitely people are working from the indian railways 
and you can definitely have the license it is not difficult at all it is very easy to get irs license please do attend the next webinar and also if you are willing the next training session good evening sir what is the basic language level of irs license for a maintenance sir abhi to bataya na yaar indian railway have ever whether eligible for design site uh if you are on the maintenance side you need to do the some work you need to show some proficiency and evidence in signaling try to do some designing try to join a uh, company where you are the designing or for even the maintenance side also maintainer also you have the irsc license but on the indian railway scenario in india you do not have any much opportunities for the maintainer or a tester or a verifier you have opportunities in india with the different companies who are dealing with uk signaling for irsc designing license verification license only if you are planning to ship to uk yes you can go with the maintainer's verification and tester all these licenses you can you can go i am working in project management uh, team so what license i applied i applied uh okay. where is it project, project management with which project is it with the railway signaling is it with the uh, what project it is if you can kindly clarify with us by the next week through the mail id i will get you the clarification on this project id i am working as a ei maintenance engineer can i apply for license yes you can apply for license and episode 2 uh, suspense thriller yes it is a suspense thriller <laughs> check irsc.org website and exam support there are loads of exam support material yes very I, true but nobody will explain to you as uh... <laughs> yeah we do in the uh, i am working as a msdc installation he is eligible for license maintenance he, as a installation engineer in general you are eligible not especially for msdc correct and uh, i want license in maintenance yes you will get it you will get be you will be getting more informants maintenance and of all signaling gears point machines msdc network switch on board gear it is a level 2 no problem you can apply for the maintenance you can apply for the maintenance irc license sir i am designing signal interlocking plan section selection table then uh, core plans am i eligible very much eligible yes. you please join for the training you will be very much eligible very good happy to know that i am leading a design team for the dfct jobs of, with a work experience of 12 years which is one of the apply i took a student membership for 10 years back how to upgrade the same wo to hame pata nahi yaar you have to apply to whom you take the uh, student membership IRC directly you can need to apply that i will we will not be able to help you in this regard can you please make a webinar for irsc which license uh, yeah, i'll check i'll check and come back i don't know it is available but if yeah. it is available then i can make one yeah, yeah i will try to yes he he has already told about that i have two years testing and engineering experience can i eligible for the certificate yes please you are eligible sir to write but what IRC certificate exam, uh, <laughs> So he says that he is a testing engineer. Testing, test, testing. You can get it. No, no, sir. Correct, sir. Okay, okay. But uh, is he available? Can can I? Uh, am I eligible for this certificate? Does he mean license or I don't? Know. No, sir. Okay, fine. It means the modules probably. So to write okay. IRS okay. exam, is it required to introduce my I uh, my career in railway signaling IRS model membership? Sir, your answer, please. Uh, what is it, sir? I am not. Uh... To write IRSC exam, is it required yeah. to introduce my and my career in a railway signaling from IRSC member? I don't. I, I could not get exactly what he wants. Anyway, let him wait for part two and come back. I think part yes. two will be able to cover. Now, because without a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Without a membership, he will not be able to apply for license and yeah. also the. Yeah. Waiting so... for hero entry. Wait for hero. There is a change in hero. So we are getting a new a new hero next week. <laughs> Please wait for that and attend for that next seminar also. Yeah. We will be sharing yeah. the same information next week. Thank you for yeah. joining. 
Thanks, sir, for yeah. a very good information. People really love yeah. it. They Thanks, would sir. like to attend the next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, okay, right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you sir. Uh, all. Uh, cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank, thanks, Parati, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>